to be presenting here in today's presentation will be a little bit about how to identify that you need the mental health services and then also needing the mental health services and how to access them. So moving on to the agenda that we have. We'll be talking about common contributors to stress, good stress versus bad stress, barriers to seeking help, a little bit about stress management, and then moving over to an overview of mental health services. Please feel free to ask me any questions or stop me in between. You can also raise hand or put things in the chat. So common source of stress for international students. Some common sources I've listed here, isolation and loneliness is on the first because it's one of the top most sources of loneliness for international students moving to this different country from your country, leaving your culture, leaving essentially leaving everything that you've learned so far in life in terms of communication styles, food, culture, religion, politics, that can lead to a lot of loneliness and isolation once you come here, not having the kind of community that you had back in the back in your home country, difficulty finding community can also lead to negative thinking patterns, which is the fourth one here about yourself, about feeling like, oh, I'm socially awkward, people don't like me, and that is just because you're feeling isolated, you're feeling alone. The other factors that come with it are homesickness, lack of confidence when you don't have that kind of community, don't have that kind of structure to support you. And when you see people around you who maybe don't look like you or don't behave in ways that are common or normal for you, it is very okay to feel isolated. It is very okay to feel homesick. Sometimes people don't get jokes cultural messages, cultural references. And as international students, uh, we don't get those cultural messages either that are present in the US. And that can lead to a lot of loneliness and isolation. Added to that is the chronic busyness that comes with not only being an undergrad or grad student, but also starting from scratch to understanding a completely new education system, completely new norms of what it means to be in class, what it means to um, raise your hand if, in a different language too. Sudden changes, crisis happening back, in, back at home or even the sudden change that, that you fear, that you face when you come here of, of this one day of moving to a different country and then realizing that this is it now. Uncertainty about visa concerns and financial concerns, not knowing if you're gonna be able to stay here, what would it be like to find a job? Uncertainty about things happening back at home. Even uncertainty about strong relationships on, would, would you be able to maintain those? Especially with COVID uncertainty about health of, folks back home. So all of these factors, even as I list them, it makes sense that that would create additional stress in the lives of international students. Now, some people would say that, well, some stress is good. It helps me perform. It helps me um, be as productive as I want to. And yes, some stress is definitely good. But how much of that stress is actually good? So this is called a stress performance curve. Uh, on the y-axis, we have performance. On the x-axis, we have stress. If you look at this region here, the low region, this is when you have been, you're not feeling stressed, you're not feeling motivated. If you decide to do an assignment in this region, it is going to be very hard because you don't feel stressed enough to feel motivated enough. You're going to get bored, frustrated, all of that. Let's increase the level of stress a little bit. Maybe the deadline is approaching, the stress is increased, and maybe it's like three or four days um, or two days before the deadline. Your stress level is optimum at this point. It will lead to best performance creativity. It will lead to best sense of achievement. You will be able to perform and feel as motivated as you want. Now, it, let's increase the level a little bit more. Say it's um, four hours before the deadline or two hours before the deadline. Your stress level is so high that you end up feeling overwhelmed, exhausted. Often you may have noticed that right before an exam or right before a deadline, when in those last crucial seven or eight hours, 
the urge to procrastinate increases because it's it becomes so difficult to work on the thing because you're constantly criticizing yourself, feeling bad about yourself. So this level of optimum stress is what we are looking for. How do we know though, if we are here or if we are in the high level? So let's see some steps for recognizing that stress. So these are some things that you can sort of keep yourself aware about and in uh, lieu of recognizing your stress. If you notice that there is a recent change in your mood, recent change in uh, emotional reactions, if you're feeling particularly sad, happy, angry, snippy, which is not something that you usually do, then that is that is a, your mind trying to alert you that something might not, not feel right. If you notice that you're constantly sleepy or not energized even after, after getting a lot of sleep, not being able to sleep, that is also a very good awareness. Changes in personal hygiene in terms of not wanting to shower after five days as well, not wanting to do basics like eating, not wanting to drink water, not just wanting to take care of yourself at all. Another good cue is isolation and not showing up for things. Not showing up for meetings, classes, work is fine some days. But if you find yourself not showing up for things that you enjoyed, classes that you enjoyed, social gatherings that you enjoyed before, then that is another way of your body and mind letting you know that something is not right. I'm, I'm not being taken care of, so now I can't enjoy things that I wanted to enjoy. Also, another one good one would be low self-esteem, constantly feeling like you're thinking negative thoughts about yourself, you're criticizing yourself, um, thinking of thoughts like, oh, I made one, one, fail, one mistake, so now I'm a failure, all, all that type of thinking. So these are some things that can help you recognize your stress. If some of these stand out to you, I would really encourage you to sort of have them on a piece of paper somewhere in your room, so that in moments when you're feeling overwhelmed, in moments when you're not liking the way that you feel, you can sort of look at this and be like, this is happening. That means my mental health is not at its best. My well-being needs attention. So the next one here is, what do you do after? Even if you have recognized that there are so many barriers to seeking, seeking help, and the first one that I want to talk about is difficulty recognizing that need for help. So even if you're aware that there is something going on, it can be really hard to admit that um, you may need support, you may need to reach out to somebody. Um, this may You may hear others or yourself saying, I'm fine, others have it worse, I don't have these problems, look at them, they have these problems. The next one could be difficulty prioritizing your need for help blaming it on time, you don't have time, my workload is immense, I have this, 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 this going on. And to that, I would say that is, that is all the more reason if your workload is immense for you to take care of yourself. The third one that shows up a lot for international students is difficulty asking or reaching out to mental health services because of cultural factors. Um, a lot of cultures have a lot of stigma against mental health. Um, my family particularly did not appreciate mental health, did not think that mental health was a thing. And it can be really hard, even if you believe that mental health is a thing, it can be really hard to go to therapy or ask for help when all your life you've heard that asking for help makes you weak, asking for help is not a good sign, you should be resilient. Um, so all of that can be very difficult to sort of um, mold and then go into asking for help. And some of it can lead you to feel embarrassed, shameful, or guilty about seeking help, even wondering um, how can I complete my PhD, MS, undergrad, my courses, if I can't deal with this pressure? How can I be here? How can I be a good student at this good university if I need help? The, the other one is isolation in your concerns also shows up a lot in the cultural context of not being able to talk openly about mental health because of the stigma and feeling like you're the only one who's struggling with it. Everybody else has their life together. Social media also contributes a lot to this because 
people people just post happy times on social media and we see them and we think that they're having a really good time when actually they might not be having a really good time. And then the last one, which I'm gonna talk more about in this presentation is not knowing where to go at this humongous monstrosity of an organization with so many services. How do you figure out where to go and what to do? This is just a teeny tiny way of me saying, if you recognize that you're not okay, it's okay to not be okay. Just some caveats about stress management before we move on to services. So on the left-hand side, I have long-term stress management. What is it that you can do every day to sort of, um, sort of preventative measures to prepare yourself for um, in moments when you feel overwhelmed. Scheduled and routine is a big, big one. Humans are um, people of schedule and routine. We really, really thrive when we have a good schedule and routine. That just reduces the energy it takes for our mind to decide what to do on a particular time. So if you know what you're gonna do at 8 a.m. every day, that saves you the energy and frustration at 7.50 a.m. deciding what you wanna do. Good schedule and routine also would include good eating, sleeping, good exercise. And that just doesn't mean having particular hours, like only doing that at night, only getting up at 5 a.m. Anything that fits well for your routine is fine as long as you do that every day. Often eating can be really difficult because people skip that the first thing, sleeping is the next thing. And I really encourage folks to not do that and just prioritize that. Meditation, a lot of people have different feelings about meditation and meditation doesn't always need to be a long breathing exercise or sitting cross leg. -like. Meditation can be anything that you want it to be. It can be you looking out the window at the fall colors, just sitting there, having some moments in your day to just be and not worry about, about things. Also setting realistic expectations and goals. Being an international student is hard. It comes with expectations that your family back at home has for you. Also comes with expectations that people in here put on you and you yourself put on you on, I have sacrificed a lot to come to this country. Now I have to perform to the best of my ability. I cannot make even one mistake. So catching thoughts like that, which do not necessarily have realistic expectations. And then mental health services, of course, which we are gonna talk about in the next slide. But what, what to do if you're feeling really overwhelmed? What would you do in the moment? Some things to do in the moment could be, one, showing kindness and compassion to yourself, not letting those negative thoughts take control of you, practicing a mantra, practicing things uh, that you would probably say to a friend. Say your friend Lily came to you and told you that she made a mistake that led to this, this, and this. Would you say that, oh, Lily, you're so stupid, you're a failure, you can never get anything right? No, right, you wouldn't say that. But we often tend to talk to ourselves that way where we are overly critical, where we are exaggerating our faults and never exaggerating our good qualities. So sort of getting in the mindset of what would I say to a friend if they made this mistake? Also having a list of things like food, person, place, activity, that is your self-care list. Um, essentially, if you're in moments that you're feeling overwhelmed, having a list that having a particular food to go to that you can eat, having a person that you can talk to, a place which makes you feel comfortable and at home and also an activity. And it could be playing video games, reading a book, taking a walk. Also having some people to reach out. And I know as an international student that can be really hard, but even if it's people in your community, back in your home country, that's fine. Having even one person to reach out. Journaling can be really good if you're sort of feeling that your thoughts are spiraling, you're overthinking, you're worrying, and then of course, reaching out to mental health services. So then moving on, talking about the services, I do wanna pause and ask if anybody has questions, thoughts before I go into the services specifically. All right. 
So accessing services through MHS can be really overwhelming, especially as an international student, because we come from universities that have not the same systems, different systems. So one, MHS services are free for all students because you pay uh, through it from your um, uh, segregation from the fee that you pay at the end of the semester. So it's included in your fees. I do encourage you to just make use of it because it is, you're, you're already paying for it. So do make use of it. Now, the first step to make use of in mental health services is getting an access appointment. An access appointment is uh, a 20 minute appointment over the phone, which happens with a mental health counselor. And that is essentially an appointment to, for you to figure out what is it that you need? So even if you feel like, I don't know what I want, what am I going to say? You can just be like, I think I'm not well. I think I'm not doing great. This, this, this is happening to me. Can you help me? And that access appointment and that the counselor that you would be talking to would be able to connect you with the service that you need. And I'll be talking about what the exact services are. Now, how do you get this access appointment? You can get it online by signing into your My UHS portal. And then you will be able to see a list of provider names, see a list of uh, their availability and sort of sign up. The other option is calling our front desk at 608-265-5600, option two. And then you can just say, hey, I'm looking for an access appointment. All services are virtual right now. Access appointments are being done over the phone. So now what happens? What are the services that you can get after this appointment? So once you're done with that appointment, the counselor will tell you about the following services. So the main one, definitely counseling. If you're looking to get counseling, UHS does counseling, um, individual group and couples. Individual counseling is when you meet with your counselor once, maybe two to three weeks, you get 10 sessions per year. And that space can be anything that you want it to be. If you want it, to be a space where you just process stuff, that it can be that. If you want it to be a place where you want to learn more skills, uh, sort of talk about things, explore things that happened to you in the past, it can be anything. A lot of people have many assumptions about what counseling is. It can be anything that you want it to be. So that's individual counseling, something that you can get inside UHS. Another one would be couples counseling. If you do have a partner and they are in Wisconsin, then you can definitely sign up for couples counseling. The partner does not need to be a student at UW, but they do need to be in Wisconsin. The third one is group counseling, which also a lot of people have many mixed feelings about. Group counseling can be an excellent source of finding that connection, that missing community feeling. It is your one and only way to get feedback from people who are like you, may have shared experience like you, and are willing to give you direct, honest feedback about yourself and are willing to take yours too because we create a safe and trusted setting. Group settings are also confidential, have two therapists and approximately six to seven members. Currently, we have an international student support group that is running that is specifically for international students who feel like they cannot share their concerns in front of their other American friends or even other friends back in their home country because nobody can really understand what it means to be an international student. So that group can be a, an excellent source of support. And I will definitely show the group's page and how to uh, take a look at the group schedule um, at the end of this. The other, but what if you're looking for one-time support? You don't really wanna be in counseling forever. You don't really wanna do more than two sessions. What do you do for one-time support? Single sessions are an excellent source for that. Once you do the access appointment, and if you're not sure, you can be like, hey, can I do a single session? And single session is essentially one session with a counselor. It's a 50-minute session where it's a chance for you to either do some problem solving, get some specific, specific things sorted, or just figure out what would it be like for me to be in counseling. And if you feel that counseling would be a good option, then you can always move from single session to individual counseling. The other one-time support options are workshops. We do workshops constantly, um, almost every two weeks. They are sometimes targeted at specific populations like this particular one is a workshop for international students. 
but a lot of times they are open they are about um, how to deal with anxiety skills uh, you want to know for anxiety skills to excel in school how to increase your communication skills all, all of those topics so and i will also show where to take a look at which workshops are happening when the other services that MHS has uh, is assessment. If, you, if you're feeling particularly concerned about your eating, um, identity issues, substance use, then you can tell the access provider that you would want to go under an assessment and a provider will be able to do the assessment for you. Now, these are the services present at MHS, but what if you don't want to go through that access appointment? What if you want something that is maybe in two days or three days? Let's talk here is your option for that. Let's talk does not need you to go through the access appointment. Let's talk is essentially drop in counseling. You can make an appointment for it through the UHS website, through the My UHS portal, and then just sign up for it and it'll be on Zoom. It'll be maybe a 30 minute session with a counselor. It would just be drop in counseling. If you ever feel like you need somebody to talk to, but you don't wanna go through all of that. The next one is care management. What if you feel like you don't wanna be at UHS or you're done with your 10 sessions that we have at UHS and now you want to move to the community. You want to see a provider long-term outside. What do you do then? But you're unsure about insurance because it's confusing. You don't know how that happens. Care managers are people who are aware of insurance needs, who are aware of um, providers with specific identities. Wisconsin being a predominantly white state, it's really it can be really hard to find a provider who holds um, ethnic or racial identities as you. And care managers are folks who can help you find that provider. Again, you will go through the access appointment first, the one that we talked about in the previous slide, and then they will be able to set you up with a care manager. It'll be a 30 minute appointment, and then the care manager would be able to figure out what your insurance is, what options does it give you, where can you go with it, etc. Some other services for MHS, there are also bilingual services available at MHS. So if you're wondering, if you're confused, if you don't want to speak to your counselor in English, if you don't feel comfortable in English, uh, we do have Spanish speaking counselors and then our Mandarin speaking counselor as well. And you can ask for those services. Um, even if you feel like you are comfortable with English, you can still ask for a specific identity identity based providers and be like, I'm only comfortable seeing an Asian provider or female provider, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other service that MHS has is survivor services uh, for survivors of sexual assault, if you feel like uh, you've experienced a sexual assault, harassment, dating, domestic violence, stalking, anything of that sort, Survivor Services is a, an excellent resource. The 24-hour crisis line. Now, what if you're in immediate crisis? What if, and crisis doesn't have to be, uh, have to look a certain way. Even if you're feeling extremely overwhelmed, you don't know who to reach out to, the 24 hour on call crisis line is available to you every day. No matter if it's 3 a.m. at night, somebody will be there to talk to you if you're feeling essentially anything. There are also some online resources. Silver Cloud is one, it is an application that helps, uh, has modules for depression, anxiety, body concerns, sort of helping you set a routine for yourself, helping you. Help yourself if you don't feel comfortable sharing those concerns. And the last one is you at risk. And I'm gonna stop sharing this screen now and share the other thing. So I'm going to share the groups page for MHS just for y'all to have a quick look at before I end.
Here's the link to the groups page. If you open it, you'll be able to see all the groups listed there, all the workshops listed there. I'm going to share it, just walk. So that's the group counseling schedule. There are several workshops, all of them listed here. You can sign up for a workshop online by clicking on this button. And then these are our interpersonal process groups. They usually happen all days of the week, multiple times, but uh, Thursdays and Fridays are not here because they're already full. This is the international student support group. Happens Friday, 10.30 a.m. to noon. I think currently it, it is full, uh, but you can always check back uh, by calling the front desk. And all of these resources are still valid next semester. Every group restarts next semester. So if you feel like this is something that you would be interested in, um, I would really encourage you to make an appointment there. The other good groups are LGBTQ support group, the black women's group. There are several others here which are drop-in group so you don't have to make a commitment to come to them weekly it can just be like i want to come today and don't want to come the next week these are some other psychoeducational groups and workshops and then we have the student success workshops wellness groups so this page can be a helpful resource to just sort of go through it and figure out what groups feel good to me what workshops feel um like i want to do them um i'm gonna stop there um and i will share the link to silver cloud and you at risk the things that i talked about questions that folks have for me about hey i had this problem in accessing services i had that i couldn't get services anything Okay, um, I will, looks like folks don't have questions. If you do have any questions, feel free to, I'm gonna hang maybe five, 10 minutes here as Anthony starts uh, presenting, presenting, and then so you can pose the questions in chat. Yeah, I, if you do, I do oh, have you have a question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so other than the indicators of um, stress, are there other ways through which um, someone can know if there is a mental, mental health concern? So rather than just recognize like I'm going through emotional heart burst, are there medical, um, are there ways to um, investigate this to be sure that it's not just a one time thing, that there is really a mental health concern? Mm -hmm. And, and that sort of depends on the kind of mental health concern that's showing up for someone. I would say that those signs of recognizing if things are changing for you suddenly uh, are a good first attempt. And then once you meet with a counselor or a therapist, that would be the second step to sort of figure out what's really going on. Is it situational stress? Is it something that you need to be concerned about? Do you need significant life changes to deal with it? Does that answer your question? Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you can post questions in the chat. I'm gonna be here five, 10 minutes till Anthony starts presenting. If you have more questions, please feel free to email them to Yuriko. I'm also gonna actually share my personal email here in the chat so that you can email me too. So that's my personal email, and you can also email me with questions, email Yuriko with questions. Thank you so much for listening to me and being here. Please be kind to yourselves and take care of your mental health, okay? Over to you, Anthony. Awesome, thank you. Um, just give me one second to share my screen. All right, can everyone see that? Oops. Um, okay. 
So hi everyone, my name is Anthony Ramos. I am the coordinator of communications and outreach for recreation and well-being. Uh, and today I'm gonna go through um, how you can live well at UW uh, and kind of what it means to be an active badger on campus. Um, so what we'll cover today, we'll cover um, who we are and what we believe in, uh, how you can find your fit at UW uh, and why it's important to live well. Um, so looking at a broad perspective of uh, recreational well-being, about 70% of all students participate in uh, at least one of our activities throughout the year. Um, about one in five students play at least one intramural sport. Uh, we'll, we have over 500 student employees. Uh, we also have eight recreation centers uh, and outdoor spaces uh, with um, brand new state-of-the-art facilities and two new synthetic turfs by 2023. Uh, so our mission here on campus is we move Badgers to play hard, get fit, and live well. Uh, and so we believe playing hard is more about giving are all than it is about winning. We believe getting fit is more about being confident in how you feel uh, rather than how you look. And we believe living well is not a destination, but a journey to do what is best for your body, mind, and our world. Um, so everybody is welcome on uh, in our facilities. Uh, we're here to help you find your place on campus. Uh, so the first thing, uh, similar to, to MHS and UHS, um, is membership is already included in your tuition. Um, so a lot of our services are free to students, uh, as long as you pay your segregated fees to the university. Um, so we have quite a bit of spaces on campus, and we'll go through what each space is. Um, but basically, the spaces in red are the spaces that are our buildings. Uh, the spaces that are in gray are outdoor fields, and we do have one uh, space in black there that's under construction. And again, I'll go through each one more specifically, but just know that we uh, are on many places on campus. So no matter where you're living, uh, if you are in Madison, um, then you can have access to awesome facilities. Um, so our first uh, flagship facility is called the Nicholas Recreation Center. Um, that recreation center Center is uh, an enormous five-story um, facility where students are welcome to play sports, exercise, swim, uh, work out and, and use weights, um, run. There's a track on the top floor. Uh, so it's about five floors of fitness space in which we host all different activities. Um, we're open typically around uh, 6 a.m. in the morning and close around midnight uh, during the weeknights and a little bit earlier in the weekends. Uh, but this is on um, the southeast side of campus. Uh, and if you have not been there, I definitely uh, recommend going in and getting a tour. <clears throat> Next on our left, uh, that is called The Shell. And The Shell is a, uh, an offshoot of our football stadium here where we've kind of outfitted it with some weights. There's an indoor track. Um, there are, and there's also an ice skating rink inside the shell as well. Uh, again, all that is included um, in your tuition fees. So feel free to use any of that. The picture on the right is a picture of our Nielsen Tennis Stadium. Uh, so we have one facility just dedicated only to tennis. Uh, there are some small fees applied to play there, uh, but they're super reduced price to students. Uh, and we see a lot of extenders, about 12 or 15 full-size tennis, cor tennis courts in the facility. Um, they host a lot of tournaments, they host a lot of um, lessons, which we'll go into, um, but that's our Nielsen Tennis Stadium. Um, and then we have a brand new um, facility under construction right now called the Baki Recreation and Wellbeing Center. That's going to be um, on the Lakeshore side of campus and will be another huge facility, very similar to the Nicholas Recreation Center. Uh, and that's expected to open in 2023. And so some inside pictures of what it's going to look like, these are just renderings, um, is that there's going to be a cycling studio, uh, a demo kitchen, which will give uh, lessons on how to cook, uh, or beginner lessons on uh, what ingredients you should be using in your food to have a healthy diet. Uh, then there will also be more basketball courts, uh, and also an ice rink and a swimming pool in there as well. 
So as you can see, we have something for everyone. So how can you play hard and get fit and live well? Um, so first, we have a ton of virtual programs if you're not uh, in Madison. Um, first are our group fitness classes. Those classes are your yoga, your Zumba, your Pilates. Uh, and so we stream some of them um, live while the class is happening. So all you need to do is open your laptop, uh, set some space aside in your dorm, in your house, wherever you're living, uh, and start exercising and following the cues of the instructor. It's a great workout and a great, to stay, great way to stay fit. We also have intramural esports in way um, in which you can sign up and play things like um, video games like FIFA and Madden, Rocket League, um, Call of Duty, basically ways to connect with other Badgers uh, in that online world in a friendly competition kind of way. We also also, also offer virtual personal training. Uh, and that's when you'll meet with a trainer, usually over Zoom or a Skype or a FaceTime. Uh, and then our personal trainer will walk you through on how to set goals to either gain muscle uh, or whatever your goals are, if it's to lose weight, if it's to get tone. Um, they'll kind of work with you and develop a plan for you to uh, hit those fitness goals. And um, they're all certified trainers that, they're, that are also students. And then we also have athletic training uh, telehealth. And so uh, athletic trainers are the ones that help if you ever have a sport-related injury. Um, so say you're playing badminton and you happen to tweak your ankle uh, and it's kind of been swollen for a few days, feel free to come down and check, get it checked out by an um, athletic trainer. Uh, they'll also go on the Zoom call and ask you questions on your symptoms, uh, ask you if you've been icing it, asking if, um, if it feels tender. So they'll kind of work you through any ailments that come up and are there to, to check on you and will help you get better back to 100%. Um, so diving into our group fitness classes, um, so like I said, we do have virtual and in-person classes. Um, they're open to all fitness levels. So if you've never worked out a day in your life or you're for a workout expert, um, it's always, always okay to just drop by a class uh, and get started. Um, so we offer yoga, Zumba, group strength, uh, and some more intense ones. So your yoga is going to be a little bit slower, a little bit calmer, and then your uh, high intensity ones are going to have you sweating, have you, uh, have those arms burning and actually using a lot of weights. And so, um, it's kind of whatever you prefer in your workout style. Um, we have free classes, um, uh, at the beginning of every single, uh, semester and at the end of each semester. Um, if you, and then after, in between those time periods, you do have to pay a $30, uh, a semester or a $50 semester group fitness pass. Mind you, this money that you're spending uh, goes directly back to our group fitness instructors, which are all also students. Um, so the money we gain from um, our group fitness uh, passes all gets paid back to our instructors who are also students on UW campus. Uh, and a lot of them are studying um, different things in health or kinesiology. And so they're supporting their uh, well-being on campus and, and providing that uh, payment to them. We also offer uh, intramural sports. Um, so that's basically when you play sports against other UW students. Um, there can be competitive or recreational leagues. Not everyone wants to try their hardest all the time. It can be just for fun. Um, some examples, we have frisbee and hockey, sand volleyball, tennis, soccer, basketball, lacrosse, and a lot more. Uh, we also offer unified sports in which uh, that is where we take a small select handful of students from UW uh, and then pair them up with Special Olympics of Wisconsin, which are um, typically athletes who have mental disabilities. So we'll kind of split the teams half and half, uh, and we'll teach some skills on how to shoot a basketball or how to kick a soccer ball. Uh, and that's a fun way to kind of get back to the community. And so uh, to play intramural sports, that's going to be $25 a semester or $45 a year. Mind you, again, all the money that we get from these passes go directly to the officials who are officiating the uh, game. So um, so it, it's pretty fun. So if you sign up for a basketball uh, team, you can sign up with a few friends, uh, and then we'll do all the work in scheduling, uh, finding a space on campus, and providing referees and keeping track of the store. The score. So all you have to do is show up with a few friends, um, play your game, and then we'll let you know who you're playing next week. So it's typically um, very easy to get started and a fun way to kind of get your body moving and active. So sport clubs are a um, club. There are clubs that fall under recreation well-being. 
And so these are a little bit more competitive clubs. Uh, and we have 48 total. A lot of these clubs um, practice throughout the year. Uh, and a lot of these clubs compete uh, regionally and nationally. So they'll travel across the country uh, facing other college club teams as well. Um, if you can take a look at the list, some of the my favorites that I like to watch are our water skiing wakeboard club. Uh, I think our um, dance league team is really cool. Um, there's a lot of people on the esports team uh, since you're able to have much more uh, competition that way. So if you're ever interested in any of these clubs and joining the clubs, all you have to do is go to our website and that uh, link and reach out to that club president and they'll let you know if there's a trial process, if it's anyone can join. Um, and that way it's um, accessible for all. So lessons, we also offer a, a wider range of lessons. Um, and so if you've never learned how to swim before, if you know how to play tennis before, if you never learned how to play or how to ice skate before, we have student instructors who are willing to teach you um, everything you need to know and get you from not knowing to be an expert at it. Um, there's also other levels. So if you already know the basics of ice skating, we can do a little bit more advanced work. Uh, or if you know how to swim already, we can show you how to swim to create a good workout for yourself. We also offer lots of American Red Cross courses if you're interested. Those are your um, courses that will teach you how to be a lifeguard, will teach you how to perform CPR on um, other people uh, and how to react in emergency situations. We also have an introduction to Olympic weightlifting. Um, that's a style of weightlifting in which uh, the main goal is to lift the most weight like over your head. Uh, and so it's very, uh, it's a very old style of weightlifting that's been around the Olympics for uh, hundreds of years uh, and is a fun way to kind of get your body moving in a different way you're probably not used to. Um, and so we also have private and group formats. Uh, if you'd rather have work on one-on-one -on -one or if you'd rather work with you and your best friend to kind of learn those things, uh, we're able to do that. And we also offer a self-defense course, uh, which is um, targeted towards our women population uh, and um, can teach you the skills to uh, keep yourself safe on campus if, uh, if you think that's what you need. So uh, personal and some training. So our personal training is that way where you work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer and they'll help you figure out your workout goals uh, and uh, whatever goals you have. There's also small group training and those are we also take a few of your friends uh, and you'll, there'll be one personal trainer working all of you out through a workout. Uh, and it's a lot of fun, it creates a lot of camaraderie, it helps you stay accountable, um, and it's a fun way to just get, again, get your body moving. Both are offered for um, in-person and virtual. Uh, and sessions usually start at $40 an hour. Uh, again, that's, that money is paid directly to our, um, to our trainers. Uh, question that ties the lessons at any cost. I'll go back one. Um, those, the lessons um, on here, all of them do have costs associated besides the self defense class. I believe that's free. Um, however, a lot of the lessons money is going back to instructors, and a lot of it is um, subsidized uh, for, student, uh, for students as well. So, for instance, I believe a swim class um, that would meet twice a week for about four weeks to get you in the water for the first time and kind of situated, that would be around $60. Uh, and then you can figure if you want to follow up again or, um, or, or stop there and kind of think you can go on your own. Um, so a lot of the lessons that we do teach you is meant for you to go off on your own eventually. It's not going to be this recurring thing where oh, I've got to pay for lessons over and over again. No, we try to teach you to be self-sufficient. Um, that way, it's the most cost effective for everyone, and you can be on your own and getting a great workout in, whether it's in the pool, playing tennis, or ice skating, et cetera. So, good question. Um, our well being. So, as recreation and well being, a lot of what we focus on is um, the mental aspects of exercising and how it's important to, um, to your mental health. And so, we often offer workshops that kind of dive into those topics on how. Um, either a healthy diet or exercise can help your, your mood, can help you de-stress. Uh, we also have guided meditations. Uh, those are going to be with the certified uh, meditation specialists. And so uh, they're usually about 30 minutes long at the morning. So they kind of start your day off on the right foot, uh, get you really thinking about um, what you can accomplish that day, set some goals for yourself, uh, and kind of reflect on your past. 
And then we also offer peer wellness coaching, which is where um, you meet in a group of three to five students with a peer wellness coach. And uh, they'll also work you through uh, what kind of personal goals do you have? What kind of uh, well-being goals do you have? Do I want to sleep this many hours a day? Do I want to go to the gym this many times a day? Do I want to hang out with my friends this many times? So um, there's a lot of different aspects of well-being that can kind of um, pull you in different directions. And so we, we have someone dedicated to kind of help you sift through all those uh, options and kind of get you to where you need to be. Uh, I thought training I mentioned is where if you're injured in the field, we're able to help you. Again, that's free of charge. Uh, and then we also offer massage therapy. So we have a few massage therapists at the Nicholas Recreation Center. Uh, and you book those appointments online. Uh, and there's, again, a cost for those. However, that goes to the massage therapist. Um, if you're looking for a job on campus, we are always, always, always hiring. Um, things like, you know, officials, lifeguards, test instructors, graphic designers. Um, we're always looking for students to kind of help out. And so uh, we love having students work for us because it just creates more friendly interactions for the other students who are playing those events uh, or other facilities, et cetera. Um, so life as an active badger. So why is it important to stay physically active on campus? Uh, so first, some of the big benefits, the physical benefits are weight management, improved muscle health uh, and bone health, delayed effects of aging, lower blood pressure, decreased risk of heart attack, and decreased risk of diabetes. Uh, there's also those mental health aspects as well. So reduced stress, improved memory, focus, and productivity, better sleep, improved mood, and increased energy. So when we dive a little bit deeper into that well-being aspect, so well-being itself is the active pursuit to understand and fulfill individual and collective human needs. Um, so that's going to be your overall, do I feel well? Do I feel safe? And we break these down into actually seven different aspects of well-being. Um, health, meaning safety, connection, achievement, growth, resiliency. So if you find this balance in your life where each one of these seven aspects of well-being is like checked off, then that means you're, you're in a good, uh, healthy state, you're um, a balanced person, you're someone who um, is on top of their stuff and is happy with their life. And so then kind of deep into what each one means exactly. So uh, you can increase your overall physical and mental health uh, by using our, our services um, and um, utilizing everything we have to offer. Um, finding meaning, it means finding something larger than yourself. Um, so when you come to our facilities or, or to our, our player sports, are you part of a community or are you just by yourself? Are you joining a sport club uh, or are you just an active user who goes once a week? Um, so it can mean, meaning can mean different things to different people uh, in a lot of different aspects. Uh, feeling safe means to be able to be yourself in our spaces. Uh, we celebrate uh, many different kind, types of cultures, uh, types of um, genders in our spaces. And so it doesn't matter where you, who you are, where you come from, you should feel safe in our spaces. Uh, and we're always actively working to uh, make students feel that way. Uh, and then creating connections within the active manager community. So uh, if you enjoy uh, talking with other people, hanging out with other people, then hopefully you're finding those connections at our spaces. Uh, and if you're taking your friends out to an ice skating night, or if you're taking your friends to uh, walk around the track, then um, you're just creating memories for yourself and, uh, and connections that are just built stronger uh, once you have a friend that kind of goes with you through some of this stuff. Uh, for achievement, you can discover resources to achieve your goals in and outside of the classroom. You may have goals to, I want to learn how to swim, or I want to lose X amount of weight, or I want to lift as much as this, or uh, I just want to go once a week and twice a week and just get my steps in. Um, it doesn't matter what your goals are, we're here to help you every step of the way. Uh, and so any goal that you hit outside of the classroom will also eventually help you inside the classroom uh, as a way to kind of stimulate your mind. And uh, once you hit goals, it motivates you to set more goals, uh, which can be all over your lifetime, uh, and you can achieve them. Uh, and growth, we want you to grow personally and professionally. So again, we do offer lots of student employment on campus. Um, that student employment very much is a way for us to teach students how to be professionals, how to show up on the shift on time, uh, what clean looks like, um, how to uh, teach other students how to do, uh, you know, how to work out or how to swim. So 
creating relationships uh, at a workspace can be super strong for your, um, your growth as a person as well. Uh, and we're always exploring new activities uh, and strategies to build resiliency. Uh, we know as college students, you'll go through a lot of uh, ups and downs through your college career. And so how can we stay strong and, and, and use resilience and use that routine of going to get your exercise in or, or going to see your friends in the weekend uh, that keeps you strong and keeps you moving forward? So those are all uh, of the points that I had. Are there any questions? Um, I can stop sharing my screen. Uh, our website is there, recall.wisa.edu. If you want to peruse our website and see anything we have to offer. And then if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're constantly posting updates on, um, on there for uh, other activities we've done. So we got a question in the chat. When are the gym's busiest times and where's the best time to go to the Nick? Um, so the gym, uh, which is the Nicholas Recreation Center, uh, does get a bit busy uh, during the nighttime. So uh, if you're able to avoid it, I would suggest going in the morning uh, and not going to be in the gym. So um, let's, let me continue answering this question first. So the, uh, the NIC is super busy around 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. at night. So if you're able to get there anytime earlier in the morning or throughout your day, uh, a lot of students will sometimes, you know, go to class, then they'll go to the NIC to work out, and they'll go back to class. There's showers in the NIC, there's lockers. If you need to put your stuff away, if you need to get cleaned up after a workout, um, that's the easy way to do that. Um, and then another question says, I did not get the names of the gyms. So uh, our flagship main facility on campus is called the Nicholas Recreation Center. Um, that's going to be the five floors and the huge generous building. Uh, it's a little bit overwhelming uh, at first when you walk in, but we have super nice staff at the beginning of the entrance of the facility. So if you go up to them and ask them, hey, can I get a tour of the spaces? They'll be more than happy to show you around. Um, and so, can you please type it? Absolutely. And then um, we do have this second smaller gym um, for uh, students who are um, in that downtown space a little bit more, and that's the shell. Uh, and again, that has a little bit less weights uh, and cardio equipment, um, but it's, another, it's a good alternative if you're seeing that the NIC is a little bit overwhelming, uh, a little bit too much. Um, so that's that. Any other questions? These are great. Thank you, Eureka. Yeah, that, that link she put in there will, will link you to every single location we have on campus and can show you uh, the address and the, their hours of operation as well um, and all the good stuff. 